If you're heading to do the incredible North Coast 500 in 2024, then here are the top 10 must-see locations. I've saved the very best until last. Hello by the way, my name's Robbie Rome's, and I've explored the North Coast 500 several times over the last four years whilst researching and writing my own North Coast 500 guidebook. So let's get straight into it. In number 10, the Black Isle. Located just a stone's throw from Inverness on the east coast, this place is often overlooked by a lot of people. It's home to the magical Fairy Glen Falls and Channery Point where you can spot dolphins on a daily basis. Fortrose Bay campsite is also a great shout. In number 9, it's the Big Burn which is located in Golsby on the east coast. This one's a bit of a secret spot located near to the ever popular Dunrobin Castle. You'll follow a beautiful riverside path which features a number of picturesque bridges and waterfalls. Just be careful if you decide to randomly try and splash your head under this waterfall. You might just slip and fall on the rocks like this complete idiot. In number 8 it's the iconic Wally Go Steps. Enjoy a walk down this unique, naturally formed, former fishing harbour. That was a mouthful. So there are over 330 steps to tackle. Obviously you've got to go down and come back up. But trust me, the jaw dropping views out to sea will be 100% worth it. In number 7, it's the breathtaking Castle Sinclair. Located a few miles outside of Wick, a short walk from the car park will lead you to this epic cliffside fortress. Dating back to the 14th century, Castle Sinclair has a number of steps and corridors to explore. It also makes a pretty epic Instagram shot. Just remember to be careful on the cliff edge if you've got dogs, kids, or you've got a weird fear of throwing yourself off a cliff. And just before we get into the incredible top six must-see locations, I just quickly wanted to tell you about my North Coast 500 guidebook, which features incredible locations, practical tips, and stress-saving hacks to ensure your experience on the North Coast 500 is simply unforgettable. The brand new 2024 edition has QR codes, what free word references, and postcodes to make navigation easier than ever before. It features campsites, hotels, B&Bs, places to eat, itineraries, budgeting, how to plan, places to visit after the North Coast 500, including the Isle of Skye, so an Amazon bestseller. So yeah, if you're going on the North Coast 500 in 2024, take a copy with you. For $16.99, you'll get everything you could possibly need to help make your trip incredible. Thanks for listening. Now let's get back into it. In number six, we have the Carlscoot Bridge, one of the North Coast 500's most recognizable landmarks. Trust me when I say you'll be staggered at the location of this place. I've done the North Coast 500 many times and I'm still amazed at this bridge and its wild surroundings. In number 5, it's Akmalvik Bay. Located on the Drumbeg Loop, this beach is a Scottish paradise. Just imagine white sands, blue waters, and the only thing it's really missing is the Caribbean weather. Seriously though, Akmalvik is one of them beaches you'll never forget. I'd 100% recommend a stop here to stretch your legs, or if you're brave enough, not like me, go for a quick dip in the cold Scottish sea. In number four, a personal favorite of mine, Straffy Bay. Now the beaches along the North Coast 500 are spectacular and there's so many of them, but for me personally, they don't get any better than Straffy Bay. The thing I really love about this location is that it's hidden from the car park. Once you reach the brow of the hill, this magical bay is revealed. Now I'm a bit reluctant to share this location because it never seems to be that busy when I visit, but trust me, this is a very, very, very special beach. Now we're getting to the business end, in number 3 it's Sango Sands. So once you reach Durnas, you'll be spoilt with things to see and do. Sango Sands must be one of the most picturesque coastal locations anywhere in the UK, perhaps even Europe, perhaps even the world. The contrast of the blue sea against the white sand and the rocky outcrops has to be seen to be believed. No doubt you'll see thousands of photos of the viewpoint online and rightly so. It's incredibly picturesque and is a fantastic place to soak in this breathtaking piece of coastline. In number two, Torridon and the Blacknabar Pass. So I've kind of merged two locations into one here, but they are relatively close to each other. So let's start with the road to Torridon, which for me is one of the most scenic driving roads anywhere in the world. I'm not actually sure that I can verify this fact, but yeah, I think it's definitely true. The road is surrounded by huge mountains, epic locks, and incredible vistas that are just gonna completely blow your mind. I think it's at this point of the NC500, if you're doing it anti-clockwise, that you are just gonna be blown away by the natural beauty of the Scottish Highlands. Oh yeah, you're probably gonna spot some deer along the way too, so just keep your eyes peeled. Now, as you carry on towards Applecross, you have the option to go over the Blacknabar Pass, this mountain pass is a place that really strikes fear into first time NC500 drivers. The pass features a number of twisty, steep and narrow roads, 
and if you do get a second to admire the views please do because they're bloody magnificent at the top of the pass there is a viewpoint where you can pull in and you'll be able to see the mountains of sky in the distance and by the way if you are genuinely worried about doing the black Navarre pass as long as you take your time use the pass in places i think you're going to be absolutely fine and last but not least my number one must-see location for the nc500 in 2024 is the wailing widow falls this place has been top of my list for the last few years and when you visit you're going to realize exactly why this 100 foot waterfall spills out of the gigantic Loch Nagamik into the gorge below creating a magnificent spectacle honestly this is natural scottish beauty at its very best so you can view the waterfall from below by following the path to the left of the stream just be aware there's a bit of scrambling and it's going to be a little bit muddy along the way the Wailing Widow Falls can also be viewed from above, but please take care on the cliff edge when you get close to the falls, it is incredibly dangerous. Another great feature of this place is it's conveniently located near the Karlsku Bridge and Ardwick Castle, so you can visit all three in a relatively short space of time. So there we go, my top 10 must-see locations on the NC500 for 2024. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and more importantly, I really hope you have the road trip of a lifetime when you do the North Coast 500. Just please make sure to plan and book ahead, travel responsibly and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more North Coast 500 and UK road trip tips. Thanks guys, I'll see you in the next video.